2022 was loaded with solid releases this year and honestly I had a hard time picking which shoes I wanted to put in my top 10. So I'm going to run a quick clip of the honorable mentions and then we'll get into my top 10 pickups. <laughs> So I'm sure you saw a few sneakers on that list that could have easily been in somebody else's top 10. But at the end of the day, this is my top 10 and I'll explain to you all the reasonings behind all the shoes that I chose for this list. Starting with the first shoe, we have the Air Jordan 7 Citrus. Now I'm sure you guys are shocked by this one, but in my head, I just knew I had to put these in the top 10 simply because I remember wearing these back when they came out in high school and I used to wear these and cherish them and I wore them till I couldn't wear them anymore till the suede was messed up and then I wanted to get another pair and by then they were just like expensive and hard to get. Next thing you know, years go by and it's been a long time since these originally came out and I thought that this shoe would never retro again. So when I saw this was coming out for the year, I was extremely excited. I had to make sure I got these for the collection, had to double up. This is definitely gonna be in my rotation. I'm looking forward to rocking these and create new memories with this shoe at the end of the day. So yes, the Citrus 7s are on my top 10. I know they're at number 10, but out of respect, I had to put them in my top 10. Next up, we have the DJ Khaled Air Jordan 5. So as you guys know, I had the opportunity to reveal this sneaker with the other ones based off the releases and the friends and family colorways and things like that. So this shoe meant a lot to me. And I know these could have potentially not been on the top 10 because of resale value and all those other things. But to me, honestly, being a part of the release and the debut of the sneaker and being able to share that information and the qualities and materials on this sneaker and having a collaboration shoe and this being the first collaboration shoe that released to the public there's a lot of different reasons as to why I like this shoe and why I decided to put it on my top 10 and number nine is my favorite number so I feel like it was a good spot to put it at number nine next up on the list is a sneaker that I recently acquired literally like a week ago and I'm happy I finally got these I know I haven't waited for too long because it was only like a few weeks before that when it comes to the release date but either way I finally got them in my collection to complete the set and I still started to compare them with the other shoes and I was like, you know what? These actually are pretty clean. I don't like the materials all the way because I wish they would have done the same materials on the, oh my bad, I gotta show you guys the shoe. We have the Black Phantom Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott. So these in particular, like I was talking about the materials, I wish they would have chose either one or the other when it comes to the materials. The suede that they have on the toe or the side or the swoosh, I think that would have been extremely fire if they would have done that throughout the entire part of the shoe. But I know a lot of people are gonna have the great debate of like, which shoe is the best, which shoe is the worst. And some people are saying this is the worst Travis Scott and in my mind I'm still kind of thinking the reverse mochas are the worst Travis Scott of the four so far I know some people may say this is the best again this is my opinion what shoes I want in my collection and how I decide to rank them and everything it's like it, honestly there's no bad or wrong answer like <laughs> buy what you like at the end of the day I know everybody likes to like be mad at each other based off of what they like and everything it's like bro we all we can have our own opinions on the shoes that we like so for me in particular I think these fall on the list as third when it comes to the four Travis Scott's and you got the fragments and the mochas with the OG colorway. I think these two are both for sure top two. This coming in third and then reverse mochas at fourth. As of right now, that's just kind of how I feel. I think this is a very easy shoe to wear. And it being at an affordable price point as well, especially for the four colorways, being this is the cheapest one. I think overall, this is a really good cop. And a lot of people are going to be happy that they have this in their collection. And if you're looking at for investment, I think this could easily be a thousand dollar shoe down the line. Definitely excited about these. I know people are probably shocked about it but either way that's my number eight on the list next up at number seven is probably a lot of people's number one two or three on their list and that's completely fine again i have my reasonings i will explain in a second but we have the ama air jordan fours at number seven so this shoe right here in particular i knew about it before it was going on to the internet and i had this assumption that it was going to be more of a purple tone to the shoe and because of that i had this this vision in my head and when i saw the actual release i was kind of let down but at the same time i did really love of the materials and everything when it comes to the shoe and I still think the AMA 3s are better than this model in particular so again let me know what you guys think down below we saw the poll results uh, I've done a video with the whole AMA set so if you guys want to see that uh, go ahead and refer back to that I'll have the links for all this stuff down below in the description for any reviews that I have on any of these shoes as well but I think uh, overall very solid shoe I really love the materials I love the collaboration I love everything that they're doing with the AMA series especially one through four so 
these had to be on my list. Originally, they were kind of higher up, maybe around fifth or fourth place. But then I started thinking about it as I started putting the list together. And I was like, you know what? I think seventh place is where these deserve to be. Now, next up at number six on the list, we got another shoe that are probably going to shock a lot of people with the ranking. And that is the Orange Lobster Nike SB Dunk Low. So I love this pack. I had the blue pair way back in the day. I grew out of them and then I ended up selling them. And I wish I never did because now it's just so hard to find a 13 and a blue pair. And they're just extremely expensive and all the other stuff so i do want to put this set back together and get things going get the band together you know what i'm saying get the blues and the purples and the oranges and everything like that but i was like you know what i'm gonna start with the oranges and that's how we're gonna go you guys know i'm not the hugest fan of orange but honestly without the orange dislikeness bias whatever you want to call it this is a fire shoe like they did a really good job on this collaboration and obviously the other ones are very similar as well just different colors but yeah the orange does pop it hits dope with the midsole being black and the orange stitch the little accents on the swoosh with the white swoosh behind it and the different pattern on the swoosh with the two different suede's on the upper the sock liner you name it they did a really good job again like i said if you guys want to see more reviews of any of these shoes i'll make sure i have all the links for you down below in the description but yes i really like this shoe at the end of the day and i know it'd be on a lot of people's top three number one number two whatever it may be but for me there's a lot of other shoes that just hit a little bit more home when it comes to story or going to see things or whatever things like that for my story for my own self so i had to put these at number six now at number five this is a shoe that i didn't expect to be so dope when i got it in person i already knew that i liked it but i didn't know how much i was gonna like it and when i got them in hand and i saw the packaging and everything like that i was like yes this is definitely going in my top five i don't know where but i'll find a spot for it the air jordan 7 trophy room i love the way they executed this shoe with the different materials on the upper and all the little details around the shoe behind the tongue inside the sock liner the tab on the back the pull tab the gold jump man the eyelids even though the insole the box like i said there's a lot of cool details storytelling and everything that goes along with it and it's actually cool shout out to my people at jordan brand for holding me down on these as well and being able to have an opportunity to get this shoe was super dope so i was happy about this and i think i think Honestly, the reason why I ranked a little bit higher, y'all know I love Jordan 6s, and these look like Carmine's a little bit, so it kind of might have been a little bit of a bias situation when it comes to that, but either way, I was like, these gotta be in my top five. They grew on me quick as soon as I got them in hand, and just like I was talking about with some of these other shoes, you can actually get these at a really affordable price, so I think it's cool to be able to get a dope shoe, collaboration, materials, display, uh, all the presentation that comes along with it, and still be able to get the shoe at an affordable price, so a lot of people out there if you plan on getting these shoes in particular i think it's a good time to grab them right now and just like all the other ones like i said in the past when it comes to the trophy rooms on that review i think this could easily be one of those 750 dollars shoes i know it might sound crazy right now but give it a little bit of time i don't see why it couldn't happen because that's what happened to all the other ones in the past so if you're looking at it for investment purpose or all those other things, whatever it may be, I think it's a good time to buy. If you want this for your collection, same situation. I think it's a good time to buy because then you don't want to have to worry about spending that crazy extra money later down the line and be like, damn, now it's 600 bucks and I could have got them for 260 or 275 or something like that. So I always think about that as well from a collector's standpoint. But either way, <laughs> these are number five on my list let's take it to number four and that is the unc air jordan 6 now this is the gr version and honestly i am so excited to have these in my collection like i said y'all know i love sixes and i had to get the pe as well which this is a part of my pe video which will be coming out tomorrow we'll talk about that later but either way these right here this is a clean shoe very similar to the carmine color blocking which i love one of my most favorite shoes ever so because of that when i saw this in the unc C vibe and then the print on the back of the tongue and the hits on the inside of the insole and everything that they did the materials are nice on this shoe with the white leather i think overall a very very clean shoe and honestly probably really shocking for a lot of people to see this in my top 10 let alone in my top five i get that i understand but y'all know me i love me some sixes so if they would have had some and honestly i didn't get the georgetown sixes yet I need to I've been slacking being bougie not trying to pay resale on those because I want to get them for retail but every time I find a pair it's not in my size and da 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 whoop doop either way <laughs> if I would have got the Georgetown sixes those might have ended up on my top 10 as well I think that shoe is extremely dope they did a great job on the Georgetown so don't be surprised if I pick those up this year maybe the next sneaker con I don't know I might have to grab a pair when we go this week but either way let's take it to the next shoe we have the Brooklyn Museum off-white Air Force ones it was super dope because 
because I had the opportunity to actually go to the museum, see the exhibit, see the employees wearing the shoes months before they had came out, and all the different stuff. So it was cool, and we made some TikToks. Some of them TikToks got like millions of views with people seeing the employees rocking them and all the other stuff. But it was fun experience and going there and being able to celebrate Virgil through his art and his displays and everything like that. And then being able to have the opportunity to get the shoe and have it in my collection to go with my other Off-White Air Force one. So overall, I think with the experience and the storytelling behind it, let alone, yeah, obviously we know it's expensive and rare and exclusive, all the other stuff. But I think for my story of being able to go see the exhibit, go there, uh, interact with the people wearing the shoes and have fun and conversations and all this stuff and be there with my family and my friends and all that stuff i had a good time and uh, i love the experience so for that I, and also this is just a clean ass shoe at the end of the day like <laughs> if you're a ducks fan like me again a very fitting shoe as well so there's a lot of different reasons but yes i love this sneaker i think it was well deserving on the top three some people might rank this as number one or two i get that as well but I got my reasoning for the other ones. At number two, we have the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found Chicago Colorway. I'm sure all you guys understand why this would be in my top three. It might even be surprised why it's not my number one shoe. I love this sneaker. I wear a pair already. I've been trying to, I'm not trying to beat them up, but at the same time, I've been wearing these things. Like, and I got no problem. Rain, sleet, or snow, I've been rocking these, and I got no problem with the shoe. I got multiples of these, and I think this is an amazing sneaker. And the reason why I say that is because my 2015 pair, I have multiples of these. These things are cooked. I got all types of dirt and soda and you name it on these things. I had a great run with the 2015 pair. And again, I probably could clean them up and everything, but I want to create those same memories in this sneaker with my worn pair and have a couple pairs sitting on ice so I can continue to rotate through them because we don't know when the next time we might get a Chicago with the OG colors and all the things and all the stuff. I understand why it's top three for a lot of people, but my number one, Oh, my number one. I got even more memories with that shoe. And that is the Air Jordan 3 Fire Red. So these right here come in at first place. And I was talking about this earlier when I did the review on this shoe. And bruh, I know people are sleeping on these right now. And yeah, you can get them for a pretty good price. And they're still sitting on shelves at some stores for retail. I don't care about none of that. The Fire Red 3s, for me, the memories that I had with my old pair, rocking them back in high school, getting multiples of that shoe, tearing them up, watching the paint crack, all the different things, keeping a fresh pair, well at least semi-fresh because my paint's cracked and they're starting to yellow and everything, but trying to have a fresh pair on ice for all these years. And I didn't really like the retro version after that and all the different things. But besides all that, this right here, in my opinion, is the best retro OG that we have ever seen. So when it comes to OG colorways, models, cuts, materials, colors, everything like that, I think they did the greatest job on this shoe resembling the 1988 Fire Red Air Jordan 3. Materials, cuts, presentation, everything is just really, really nice on this shoe. And I know it slept on because of price and everything, but I can guarantee you these things are gonna go up. So I'm glad I got my multiples for my collection and I'm looking forward to creating memory. It's funny because I know the shoe is so cheap, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm like kind of cherishing it so much because I don't want to mess them up. I know on my Chicago ones, I'm kind of in that vibe, but these right here, I just, I cherish this shoe so much. Again, yes, I will be wearing them. I'm not going to just have every pair sitting on ice. I definitely want to wait for the right occasion to bust them out for the first time. So this shoe, Nike Air on the back, this is something that we have never seen before on the Fire Red 3s in particular, besides the OG. There's a lot of nostalgia behind these. I think they did a great job. So that's going to do it for my top 10 pickups. I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned because I got a bunch of PEs. I picked up over 25 pairs of PEs alone this year. So so stay tuned for that video. We're going to do a top 15 with my pops. Probably be dropping that one tomorrow. I'll see you on another one. All right, y'all. I'm out. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight-week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.